We know, or we should know, that the EKG tracks electrical activity. That means that the heart has to be generating electrical activity. And what we're going to look at here is how that happens. And it happens cell by cell. What we have in front of us here are two SA node cells, the little green rectangular boxes. We can see that there are two ions or, or positively charged atoms that we're going to keep track of. Of course, there are many more floating around, but if we just keep track of these two, sodium and potassium, we'll be able to see how the electricity is generated. Okay, so we have these two cells. They're sitting here minding their own business, not doing anything. You can see that when they're in their resting state, not doing anything, there's a lot of potassium on the inside and very little sodium. And on the outside, that's reversed. There's a lot of sodium and not a lot of potassium. Now, if everything were left to its own devices, these ions would mix equally inside and outside, so there'd be an equal amount of blue on the inside and the outside, an equal number of yellow on the inside and outside. But your body is expending a great deal of energy to keep things the way we see them here, with the potassium on the inside, sodium on the outside. Now, when things are like this, they're in the resting state, these ions are in concentration such that the inside of the cell has a net negative charge relative to the outside. So there's a bit more positive on the outside than on the inside. Now for reasons all its own, one SA node cell about once every second, about 60 to 100 times per minute, opens up some channels in the cell wall that will allow for some movement of these ions. Before the movement begins, remember that the inside is a bit negative compared to the outside. When the channels open up, diffusion takes place. So the potassium, seeing that there's not a lot of potassium on the outside, rushes out. The sodium, seeing that they don't have a lot of sodium on the inside, rushes in. And this happens in such a way that the inside of the cell becomes positive and the outside of the cell becomes negative. So we can make these negative. So we have changed the polarity of the, the cell wall. And we call this depolarization. It was polarized before and now it's been depolarized. This occurs in a wave-like fashion down the cell wall like this. It's going to hop across to the next cell and cause the same thing to happen. And of course this will spread like a wave throughout the heart. Once this is all over with, before we can do it again, we're going to have to move all this sodium that moved in, and we're going to have to move it out. And all the potassium that moved out is going to have to be returned to the inside of the cell, once again establishing this ratio such that the inside of the cell is once again negative, and the outside of the cell is positive. And again, the repolarization would happen in the same wave-like fashion as the depolarization. So the movement back in where things used to be is called repolarization. And this is exactly what the EKG is tracking. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is that uh, we talked about three types of tissue in the heart. Two of them were contractile tissue and conductive tissue. For the conductive tissue, this is all that happens. They send their signal on down the line. For the contractile tissue, they undergo the same depolarization, but depolarization causes them to contract. Conductive cells don't contract. 
The contractile cells depolarize, and when that happens, they contract.